الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أسك الله سبحانه وتعالى that he grants us tawfiq and success and he makes us of those who are close to him ba'ad dhir al-waladin wa sinat al-arham keeping the ties of kinship and being dutiful to your parents from the salihin of Imam Nawi and today we have two ahadith which have two very important and powerful women from the Sahabiyat. The first one is Asma bint Abi Bakr. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, guaranteed for her Jannah. And she got the nickname that Anitaqain, the one who was holding the two girdles, because of what she did for the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the Hijrah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to Medina. Abu Bakr was married to a woman called Qutayla bint Abdul Uzza in Jahiliyyah. She refused to become Muslim. With this wife, Abu Bakr Siddiq, he had two children, Asma and Abdullah. Asma and Abdullah. So because she refused Islam, he divorced her. And then he got married to another woman called Umm Rumman. Umm Rumman is the mother of Aisha. So Asma and Aisha are stepsisters from different mothers. This woman though, Qutayla, uh, she was very nice. And as we see in this hadith, it's in Bukhari and Muslim. Asma, she comes to the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, and she complains to the Messenger. She says, she says to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ummi, wa hiya mushrika. She is my mother and she is a mushrika. As in she is a polytheist. She is, you know, she's upon shirk. But she, well, he a ragiba, but she is a ragiba. Now, the author, Imam al Nawi, rahimahullah, says ragiba can have one of two meanings. Either <coughs> she is nice and she is kind to me, or ragiba, meaning she is close to Islam. Either way, she's got a good relationship with her mother. So Asma now is asking the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, shall I keep ties with my mother, Mushrika? disbelieved in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even though the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was alive. Now this is important, not only for the sisters, but also as we have seen from the previous ahadith, those people who uh, might want to cut off ties with you in Islam, the ulama have used this as other hadith as well and ayat from the Qur'an, that it is never permissible for a person to cut ties of kinship, even if they are harmful, even if they are not Muslim. So she's asking the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, shall I keep ties with her? Well, he argued, well, maybe she will become Muslim, maybe, you know, I can have a good relationship with her. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Naam, sali ummik. Yes, and be close and keep ties with your mother. What kind of Muslim? And with this, Muthaymin Rahimullah is saying here, the same sort of points that we made here, but despite the fact that she's a mushrika, despite the fact that Abu Bakr Siddiq didn't want her and he divorced her, but she is still the mother of Asma. So irrespective of what you think of them, what their lifestyle is like, what their aqeedah is like, that is still your mother, that is still your father, that is still your relative. So that's the first hadith. The second hadith is on the authority of Zainab al Now the reason why we said that she is an important lady is because she was married to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Now the ulama from the historians have said that Zain of anha, she was a worshipper, but she was also somebody who was very successful in you know the dunya as in business and trade and she was wealthy. So she used to be successful in the life of this dunya, but she was also somebody who was pious and she was known for her salah and she was known for her sadaqah because she had a lot of wealth. Abdullah bin Mas'ud was a poor man. Before Islam, when he became Muslim in Mecca and also after Hijrah, he was very poor. To the extent that Ibn uh, Thaymin, he calls him that a khafif al yad, meaning a person who doesn't have much in his hands. So Zainab was wealthy, the husband is poor. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, now this is Hadith Bukhari Muslim, he says in addressing the women, تَصَدَّقْنَا يَا مَعْشَرُ النِّسَاءِ وَلَوْ مِنْ حُلِيِّكُنْ Give in sadaqah, even if it is your jewelry, even if you've got no wealth, all you've got are your earrings and your whatever it is, give it away. 
And we know this through the context of other hadith where the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is advising them and saying that, look, I've seen the fire. And most of the inhabitants of the fire are women. Now he's not saying this because he's casting them to doom. He's saying this out of khabar. And we talked about khabar and insha yesterday. This is khabar, not insha. He doesn't want women to go to the fire. But he said, I've seen the fire. And I've seen most of the inhabitants of the fire are women. For, so, tasaddaqna ya ma'ashan nisa. Give in sadaqah. Free yourselves. Right. This woman now, she's thinking, this is, the hadith is quite long, I don't want to read it in Arabic. But she's thinking, I need to give in sadaqah. But my husband is poor. Can I just give the sadaqah to my husband? So she comes to the door of the Messenger of Allah And she finds another one from the Ansari, from the, from the, from the women. Uh, she was there as well. So there's two women now waiting at the door of the Messenger of Allah And they knock on the door. And Bilal comes out, radiallahu and then he goes back in to the house. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Manhuma, who is there? Who are those two people there? So Bilal says, Imra'a min Ansar wa Zainab. A woman from the Ansar and Zainab. Now, now here the Shaykh is saying here, yeah, this is now proof to say that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was close to his companions. Because he says Zainab, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then says, which Zainab? But he didn't need to expand any further. He already knew that this is now the wife of the Nasrud. And what the question would be as well. So the Messenger of Allah, as soon as he finds out that it's that Zainab, which is the wife of Abdullah, he says, Lahuma ajran. He already answers the question even before they, they will get two rewards, both of them. Ajrun al Qaraba, one for keeping the ties and keeping the family together, or Ajr Sadaqa, and the reward for Sadaqa also. I mean, the meaning of this hadith has already proceeded from the various hadith that we've looked at. But these two are hadith specifically, specifically for the sisters, but also there are ahkam and benefits for us all. From them is those people who keep ties with you, you should keep ties with them. And even if they don't want to keep ties with you, you should still keep ties with them. To the extent that even if they're a different religion. From them, that from the best ways that you keep ties with them is to look into their affairs and be concerned about those things which concern them. And if you can relieve them of their distress, then this is one of the greatest rewards that you can get, as the Messenger of Allah is saying here, not only do you get the reward of removing that difficulty from them, but you are bringing them close. And as uh, Asma describes her mother, وَهِيَ رَاغِبَ This will actually be a means of softening the heart and keeping ties and bringing people closer together. And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us all tawfiq and success and the ability to act upon what we hear. Hada, Allahu a'lam. Sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.